Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Seattle for theCUBE's coverage of AWS Marketplace Seller Conference, now part of really big move and news. Amazon Partner Network combines with AWS Marketplace to form one organization, the Amazon Partner Organization, APO, where the efficiency is the next iteration, as they say in Amazon language, where they make things better, simpler, faster, and, and for customers uh, is happening. We're here with Chris Cruz, who's the general manager worldwide leader uh, of ISV alliances and marketplace, which includes all the channel partners and the buyer and seller relationships all now under one partner organization, bringing together years of work. Yes, uh, years If of work. you work with AWS yeah. and are a partner and or sell with them, all kind of coming together kind of in a new way for the next generation. Chris, congratulations yeah. on the new role and, Thank you. and the reorg. Thank you, yeah, it's very exciting. We're, we think an event simplifies the process on how we work with our partners and we're really optimistic. So far the feedback's been great um, and I think it's just going to get even better as we kind of work out the final details. This is huge news because one, we've been very close to the partner net. We've been working with them, we talk to them, we cover them, we cover the news, the startups, yeah. uh, from startups, channel partners, big ISVs, yeah. big and small, from the dorm room to the boardroom. You guys have great relationships. So check, mm -hmm. marketplace, the future of procurement, how software will be bought, implemented, and deployed is also changed. So you got the confluence of two worlds coming together, yep. growth in the ecosystem, yep. next gen cloud on the horizon for AWS and the customers as digital transformation goes from lift and shift to refactoring businesses. Yep. This is really a seminal moment. Can you yeah. share what you talked about on the keynote stage yeah. here around why this is happening now? Yeah. What's the guiding principle? What's the North Star? Why, what's, yeah. what's the big news? Yeah, and so, you know, a lot of reasons on why we kind of, we pulled the two teams together, but, you know, a lot of it kind of gets centered around COSEL. And so if you take a look at Marketplace, where we started off, where it was really a machine image business, and it was a great self-service model, and we were working with ISVs that wanted to have this new delivery mechanism on how to bring in, at the time, it was Amazon machine images. And you fast forward, we started adding more product types like SaaS and containers, and the experience that we saw was that customers would use Marketplace for kind of up to a certain limit on a self-service perspective, but then invariably they wanted to buy a quantity discount. They wanted to get an enterprise discount, and we couldn't do that through Marketplace, and so they would exit us and go do a direct deal with a, an ISV. And, and so to remedy that, we launched private offers you know, four years ago. And private offers now allowed ISVs to do these larger deals, but do them all through yeah. Marketplace. And so they could start off doing self-service business, and then as a customer graduated up to buying for a full department or an organization, they can now use private offers to execute that larger agreement. And as we started to do more and more private offers, really kind of coincided with a lot of the initiatives that were going on within Amazon Partner Network at the time around co-sell. Yeah. And, and so we started to launch programs like ISV Accelerate that really kind of focused on our co-sell relationship with ISVs. Yeah. And what we found was that marketplace private offers became this awesome way to automate yeah. how we co-selled with ISV. And so we kind of had these two organizations that were parallel and we said, you know what, this is going to be better together if we put together, it's going to invent and simplify and we can use marketplace private offers as part of that co-sell experience and really feed that automation layer for all of our ISVs as they interact with AWS customers. Well, I got to give you props. You and Mona were up on stage. You guys did a great job. And it reminds me of the humble nature of AWS and Amazon. I used to talk to Andy Jassy about this all the time. But it reminds me of 2013 here right now because you're in that mode where Amazon yeah. reInvent was in 2013 yeah. where you knew it was breaking out. Yeah. Everyone's, it was kind of small but we haven't made it yet. But yeah. you guys are doing billions of dollars in transactions. Yeah. But this event is really, I think, the beginning of what we're seeing as mm -hmm. the changeover from securing and deploying applications in yeah. the cloud. Because yeah. there's a lot of nuanced things I want to get your reaction on. One I heard, making your par product as an ISV mm -hmm. more native to AWS as stack. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. one major call out I heard. Yeah. The other one was, hey, if you're a channel partner, you can play too. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there's more choice. There's a lot going on here that's about to kind of explode in a good way for yeah. customers. Yeah. <laughs> Buyers get more access to assemble their solutions. Yeah. Yeah. And you got all kinds of like business logic, compensation, mm -hmm. integration, mm -hmm. and scale. Yeah. This is like unprecedented. Yeah. 
it's, it's exciting to see what's going on. I mean, I think it, we kind of saw the tipping point probably about two years ago, which you know, prior to that, you know, we would be working with ISVs and customers and it was really much more of an evangelism role where we were just getting people to try it. Just, just list a product. We think this is going to be a good idea. And if you're a buyer, it's like just try out a private offer, try out a self-service you know, subscription. And, and what's happened now is there's no longer a lot of that convincing that needs to happen. It's really become uh, accepted. And so a lot of the conversations I have now with ISVs, it's not about should I do marketplace, it's how do I do it better? Yeah. And how do I really leverage marketplace as part of my co-sell initiatives, as, as part of my go-to-market strategy? And so you've, you've really kind of passed this tipping point where marketplaces are now becoming very accepted ways to buy third-party software. And so that's really exciting. Um, and, and we see that we, you know, we can really enhance that experience. You know, and what we saw on the machine image side is we had this awesome integrated experience yeah. where you'd buy it, it was tied right into the EC2 control plane, and you could go from buying to deploying in yeah. one single motion. SaaS is a little bit different. You know, we can do all the buying in a very simple motion, but then deploying it, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that our customers have to do. And so we see all kinds of ways that we can simplify that. Uh, you know, recently we launched the ability to put third party solutions out of marketplace into Control Tower which is how we deploy mm -hmm. all of our landing zones for AWS. And now it's like, instead of having to go wire that up as you're adding new AWS environments, why not just use that third party solution that you've already integrated to and have it there as you're spinning up those landing zones through control tower. Again, back to the humble nature, you guys have dominated the infrastructure as a service layer. Mm -hmm. You kind of mentioned it, you didn't really kind of highlight it other than saying you're doing pretty good yeah. on the <laughs> IaaS or the technology partners, as you call, yeah. or infrastructure as yep. you guys call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see how the, 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 pa the control panel mm -hmm. uh, is great for those customers, yeah. but outside that, when you get into like CRM, you mentioned yeah. ERP, these business apps, these yeah. horizontal and verticals, yeah. have data, they're going to have SageMaker, they're going to have Edge, mm -hmm. they might have yep. you know, other services that are coming online from Amazon. Yeah. How do I, as an ISV, get my stuff in there, yeah. and how do yeah. I succeed, and what are you doing to make that better? Because I know it's yeah. kind of new, but not new. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, that's one of the things that we've really invested on, is how do we make it really easy to list in Marketplace? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, again, when we first start, started, it was a big, huge spreadsheet that you had to fill out. It was very cumbersome. And we've really automated all those aspects. So now, we've exposed an API as an example. So you can go straight out of your own build process, and you might have your own CI CD pipeline, and then you have a build step at the end, and now you can have that execute marketplace update from your build script right across that API all the way over to AWS Marketplace. So it's taking that effectively a CI CD pipeline from an ISV and extending it all the way to AWS and then eventually to a customer because now it's just an automated uh, supply chain for that software coming into their environment. And we see that as being super powerful. Yep. There's no more manual steps along Yeah, I want to dig into that because you made a comment also, and I want you to clarify it here in theCUBE. Um, some have said, even us on theCUBE, oh, a marketplace is just a website, it's a catalog, yeah. feels old school, yeah. feels like 1995 database. Yeah. I'm kind of yeah. just, you know, nope, saying No it. offense taken. Okay, yep. and now you're saying you're now looking at this yeah. and, and implementing more of an API based. Why yeah. is that relevant? I'm not, I know the answer yeah. you already set up with APIs, but yeah. explain the transition from the yeah. mindset of it's a website, yeah. buy stuff on a catalog yeah. to full blown API layer yeah. services. Absolutely. Well, when you look at all AWS services, you know, our customers will interface, you know, they'll interface them through a console initially, but when they're using them in production, they're, it's all about APIs. And Marketplace, as you mentioned, did start off as a website. And so we've kind of taken the opposite approach. We've got this great website experience, which is great for demand gen and you know, highlighting those listings. But what we want to do is really have this API service layer that you're interfacing with. So that an ISV effectively is not even in our Marketplace. They're interfacing over APIs to do a variety of their high you know, value functions, whether it's listing, submitting private offers. We want to have that all available through APIs. And the same thing on the buyer side. So it's integrating directly into their AWS environment. And then they can view all their third party spend within things like our cost management suites. They can look at things like Cost Explorer, see third party software right next to first party software, and have that all integrated so it's nice yeah. and seamless for that's the customer. That's a nice cloud native kind of native experience. I think yeah. that's a huge advantage. I'm going to track that closer. We're going to, we're going to follow that. Yeah. I think that's going to be the killer, killer feature. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's get to the killer feature on the business logic. Okay, yeah. all partners all want to know what's in it for me. Yeah. How do I make more cash? Yeah. How do I yeah. compensate my salespeople? Yeah. What do you guys, don't compete with me, give me yeah. leads. Yeah. Um, can I get MDF, market development funds? Yeah. So take me through the, how you're thinking about supporting the partners that are yeah. leaning in, that 
you know, the parachute will open when they jump out of the plane. Yeah. It's going to be, they're going to land safely with you. Yeah. MDF marketing mm -hmm. to yeah. leads. Yeah. What are you doing to support the partners to help yeah, them so serve their customers? It's interesting, as markets, marketplace has become much more of an accepted way to buy, you know, our customers are, are really defaulting to that as the way to go get that third party software. So we've had some industry analysts do some studies and in what they found, they interviewed a whole cohort of ISVs across various categories within marketplace, whether it was security or network mm -hmm. or even line of business software. And what they found is that, on average, our ISVs will see a 24% increased close rate mm -hmm. by using Marketplace, right? So when I go talk to a CRO and say, do you want to close uh, you know, more deals? Yes, right, and we've got yeah. data to show that. Uh, we're also finding that customers, on average, when an ISV sells you Marketplace, they're seeing an 80% uplift in the actual deal size. And so if your ASP is 100K, 180K sounds a heck of a lot better. Right, so we're seeing increased deal sizes by going through Marketplace. And then the third thing that we've seen that's a value prop for ISVs is speed of closure. And so on average, what we're finding is that our ISVs are closing deals 40% faster by yeah. using Marketplace. So if you've got a 10 month sales cycle, shaving four months off of a sales cycle means you're bringing deals in in an earlier calendar year, yeah. earlier quarter, and for ISVs, getting that cash flow mm -hmm. early is very important. So those are great metrics that we're seeing and, and you know, we think that they're and only going to improve. from startups who also want, they don't have a lot of cash, yeah. ISVs that are rich and doing well, yeah. uh, they have good, 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 good yeah. go to market funding. Yeah. You got the range of partners, and you know the next startup could be the next Figma could be in that batch exactly. of startups. Yeah. You don't know. Mm -hmm. the, the, the game is changing. Yeah. The next brand could be one of those batch of startups. Yeah. What's the message to the startup community? Yeah, I mean, marketplace in a lot of ways becomes a leveling effect, right? Because you know, if, if you look at pre-marketplace, if you were a startup, you were having to go generate sales, have a sales force, go compete, you know, kind of hand to hand with these largest ISVs. Marketplace is really kind of leveling that because now you can both list in Marketplace, you have the same advantage of putting that directly on the AWS bill, taking advantage of all the management and governance features that we offer, all the automation yeah. that we bring to the table, and so a lot and of our startups- And joint selling. And joint selling, right? When it yeah. goes through Marketplace, you know, it's going to feed into a number of our APN programs like ISV Accelerate, our sales teams are going to get recognized for those yeah. deals, and so, you know, it brings nice co-sell behavior to how we work with our field sales teams together. It brings nice automation that, you know, pre-marketplaces, they would have to go build all that, yeah. and that was a heavy lift that yeah. really now becomes just kind of table stakes for any kind of ISV selling to an any of his customers. Well, you know I'm a big fan of the marketplace. I have always yeah. have been, even from the early days. I saw this as a procurement game changer. Mm -hmm. It makes total sense, it's so obvious. Yeah. Not obvious to everyone, but there's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes, yeah. behind the curtain, so to speak, that you're handling. Yeah. What's your message to the audience out there, both the buyers, and the sellers yep. about what your mission is, what you're tr you wake yep. up every day thinking about, yep. and what's your promise to them and what you're going to work on, because yep. it's not easy. You're yeah. building a, an operating model mm -hmm. that's not a website. It's a yep. full-on cloud service. Yeah. What's your promise and what's your goals? No, and like, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do from an AWS Marketplace perspective is, is provide that selection experience to the AWS customer. Right, there's the infamous flywheel that Jeff put together that had the concepts <laughs> of why Amazon is successful, and one of the concepts he points to is the concept of selection. And, and what we mean by that is if you come to Amazon, it's, it's effectively that everything store. And when you come across to AWS, uh, Marketplace becomes that selection experience. And so that's what we're trying to do is provide whatever our AWS customers want to buy, whatever form factor, whatever software type, whatever data type, it's going to be available in AWS Marketplace for consumption. And that ultimately helps our customers because now they can get whatever technologies that they need to use alongside AWS. And I want, want to give you props too. You answered the hard question on stage. I've asked Andy Jassy this on theCUBE when he was the CEO, Adam Slevsky last year. I asked him the same question. And the answer has been consistent. We have some solutions that people want AWS end to end, mm -hmm. but your ecosystem, you want people mm -hmm. to compete yes. and build a product, and mostly point to things like Snowflake, New Relic, yeah. other people that compete mm -hmm. with Amazon services. Yeah. You guys want that, you encourage that. Yeah. You're ratifying that same statement. Absolutely, right? Again, it feeds into that selection experience, right? If a customer wants something, we want to make sure it's going to be a great experience, right? And so, uh, a lot of these ISVs are building on top of AWS, we want to make sure that they're successful, and you know, while we have a number of yeah. our first party services, we have a variety of third party technologies that run very well in AWS, and ultimately the customer is going to make their decision. We're customer obsessed, and if they want to go with a third party product, we're absolutely going to support them in every way, shape we can, and make sure that's a successful experience for our customers. I know, I know you referenced two studies, check out the website, it's got buyer and seller mm -hmm. surveys on there from Forrester. Yeah. I don't want to get into that, I want to just end on one yeah. kind of final note. You got a lot of successful buyers yeah. and a lot of successful sellers. The word billions yes. with an S was yes. on the slide. 
can you say the number? How, much, yeah. how many billions <laughs> are sold yeah. through the marketplace yeah. and the buyer experience yeah. uh, future? What's those two things? Yeah, so we went on record uh, at reInvent last year, so it's approaching its birthday, but it was the first year that we've, uh, in our 10 year history, announced how much was actually being sold through marketplace. And you know, we're now selling billions of dollars through our marketplace. Uh, and that's with an S, so you can assume at least it's two. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a large number and it's going Less than very 10. quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Can't Five. disclose it, you know, but it's, a, it's been a very healthy part of our business. And you know, we look at this, the experience that we saw. There's a lot of headroom. I mean, oh, you yeah. have infrastructure nailed down, that's only going to get better, but you have basically growth up, yeah. upside with these category, other oh, categories. Yeah. What's the hot categories? You know, we, we started off with infrastructure related products and we've kind of hit critical mass there. Like we've, there's very few ISVs left that are in that infrastructure related space that are not in our marketplace. Um, and what's happened now is our customers are saying, well I've been buying infrastructure products for years, I'm going to buy everything. I want to buy my line of business software, I want to buy my vertical solutions, I want to buy my data, and I want to buy all my services alongside of that. And so there's tons of upside, we're seeing all of these either horizontal business applications come into our marketplace, or vertical specific solutions, yeah. which you know, when we first designed our marketplace, we weren't sure if that would ever happen. Yeah. We're starting to see that actually really accelerate because customers are now just defaulting to buying everything through their marketplace. Chris, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know we went a little extra long there. I wanted to get that clarification on the new role, yep. new organization. Great, great reorg, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Next level, yep. next gen. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Okay, Appreciate thank it. you for the opportunity. All right, here covering the new, big news here of AWS Marketplace and the AWS Partner Network coming together under one coherent organization serving buyers and sellers. Billions sold the future of how people are going to be buying software, deploying it, managing it, operating it, it's all happening in the marketplace. This is the big trend. It's theCUBE here in Seattle with more coverage here at Davis Marketplace Sellers Conference after the short break.